Oh, this is my bros. Okay. Stereotypes and assumptions are the words. I mean, maybe from me walking in, you might have noticed my blonde hair. Maybe you thought, oh gosh, here's another dumb blonde. Well, you're probably right. In this following selection, we see the wolf, our main character, who is targeted by these stereotypes and assumptions. Presenting the true story of the three little pigs by John Skeetza. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story. Because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm Alexander Teeble, but you can call me Al. I don't know how this big, bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault that we eat cute little animals like bunnies, sheep, and pigs. If cheeseburgers were cute, people would be big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big, bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, our friend the wolf was making a birthday cake for his dear old granny. He had a terrible sneezing cold, and he ran out of sugar. So he walked down the street to ask a neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright. He built his house out of straw. Can you believe it? Who builds a house out of straw? So of course, the minute that wolf knocked on the door, it fell right in, and he didn't just want to walk into someone's house. So he called out, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. He was just about to go home without a cup of sugar for his dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when his nose started to itch. He felt a sneeze coming on. He started huffing, and he started snuffing, and he sneezed. A great sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house to us fell right down. And right in the middle of the pile was the first pig, dead as a doornail. He'd been home the whole time. And it seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner just lying there. So he ate it. Think of it as a cheeseburger, just lying there. He was starting to feel a little bit better. But he still didn't have a cup of sugar for his dear granny's birthday cake. So he went to the next neighbor. This was the, the, the first little pig's brother. He was a little bit smarter, but not that much. He built his house out of sticks. He rang the doorbell to the stick house. Nobody answered, so he called out, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled back, Go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hands on my chinny chin chin. He had just grabbed the doorknob when he felt another sneeze coming on. He huffed and he snuffed and he tried his best to cover his mouth, but he sneezed. A great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down, just like his brother's. When the dust had cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it in the open. So he did the only thing that there was to do. He had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. He's starting to get awfully full, but his cold was feeling a little bit better. He also still didn't have a cup of sugar for his dear Green's birthday cake. So he went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He built his house out of bricks. He knocked on the brick house and no answer. So he called out, Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig, are you in? <laughs> and do you know what that rude little porker answered back with? Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again! <laughs> Talk about impolite. Probably had a whole stack full of sugar just sitting there. Couldn't even spare a cup for dear old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. He was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday cake, birthday card instead of a cake. That's when he felt his cold coming on. He huffed and he snuffed and he sneezed once again. And then the third little pig yelled back, 
and your old granny can sit on a pit. Now, the wolf is a pretty calm kind of guy. But the second you talk about granny, mm -mm. So of course, when the cops drove up, he was huffing and puffing and sneezing, making a real scene, just breaking down the pit door. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporter found out about the two pigs that he had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to ask to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound that pleasing. So they jazzed up the story with all the huff and puff and I'll blow your house down. They made him the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. He was framed. But maybe you can loan him a cup of sugar too.